to refer to it. Um, the final exam is on Thursday in the evening at 7 o'clock. Uh, just to confirm the, the time and location again, uh, the, the date has changed once already. It was supposed to be on the 29th, and now it's shifted back to the Thursday. So um, just double check again. It shouldn't have changed. This was from this morning. It's three hours. It will cover the entire course. And, and then the exam is 48% of the course grade. So when you're answering questions in the exam, consider the objective of the question. Right, so is it one of those troubleshooting type questions? Is it learning more about the process? Is it a DOE type question where you're trying to optimize and improve the process? Is it a monitoring type question? Which of the tools that we've learned about would be appropriate to answer that question? And it's usually pretty obvious because we've only learned four or five tools and they fall into those four or five areas quite naturally. But the key problems that often comes up is people will get to an answer that they don't interpret it or they don't check if the answer is reasonable. So simple things like a confidence interval. A confidence interval must be symmetrical and it must span the center point of the slope coefficient. So if you get a confidence interval that doesn't contain the slope coefficient, then you've got the wrong confidence interval. Simple checks like that um, are useful to, to do. You've written countless of exams, so I don't need to tell you how to write exams. This is probably the last exam that many of you are writing. But one strategy that might work well is to do the, the highest weighted questions first and then come back to those shorter, quicker questions. Please don't waste time repeating your question, the new question back to me. Um, I see that quite a lot. So that's using up valuable minutes that you have. Please use bullet points. There's absolutely no need to use paragraphs and long sentences. I can read um, a bullet point and understand it just as fast as a paragraph. Neither of you take longer to write a paragraph than it takes to write a bullet point. So think of yourself. If you can convey what you're trying to say in a short bullet point, please do so. Don't write paragraphs with beautiful consistency. This is not a report to your manager or something like that. This is the chance for you to show me that you know and understand the material. Okay, and then again, just check uh, that your answer is appropriate to the number of grades. I've had people give full one-page answers for something that's worth two marks. And at the end, they got it wrong anyway. So it's uh, a waste of time on this side, and it's just, it's just a, a lack of, of thinking on that side. Okay, so please be careful of that. Another thing to be careful about is um, this issue of where questions ask you to do several things. One is to calculate and also interpret. Okay, so I've tended to be more explicit about that. I will break it into an A and an E part now sometimes just because I got so frustrated that people can't read. Calculate and interpret. They'll calculate but then not interpret. So sometimes I do break it into two parts, A and B, but sometimes I don't. Because you should be able to do this by now at the fourth year, sixth year level. Um, the other suggestion is to treat the exam like a closed book and have a crib sheet with you. Um, there's really no need for you to be flipping through the course textbook or other textbooks you bring into the exam. You can bring anything you like to the exam with you. What I do suggest you only bring is a crib sheet, the table of the DOE trade-offs, and the table of the t-tests and normal distribution. Those are about the only three pieces of paper you really do need on the desk. And the crib sheet is just any notes that you can find useful. There's no need to put in the textbooks unless you haven't prepared for the exam. So if you come into the exam unprepared, sure, you'll be flipping around because you're trying to learn and answer the questions at the same time. But that's not a good strategy. Rather, bring those two pieces of paper in and that will be required. Um, there's a lot of material for you to review if you'd like. It's totally up to you how, how in depth you'd like to go. All the previous assignments are available on the course website. Uh, many of you have discovered the course websites for 2010, 2011, and 2012. So all their assignments and all their solutions are available online. Um, all the previous exams from 2010, 2011, 2012 are available. On, on the course website, the PDFs are available for those. And you've actually answered most of those questions already as, as assignment questions. So you actually have the solutions to those exams. 
because you have the solutions to the assignments, and those assignment questions all came from those previous exams. So there's there's enough material there for sure to, to practice on. Also, the uh, textbook problems, many of them have full work up to the as well, uh, which you, you probably, probably um, know about. Okay, so any, any questions or doubts on, on how to prepare for the exam? In terms of availability, um, I should be on campus most of the, the next coming weeks. Um, certainly, set up set up in a meeting in time by email would be the best way to reach me ahead of time. But if you need to see me in person, that's um, again just send an email and, and book a time, and I'll make sure I can meet with you. Also, the two TAs, um, Miriam's on maternity leave, so she's not on campus, but Shalesh is on campus. Though Miriam is answering questions by email from home, so please feel free to email her as well if, if you prefer that. Um, the, the content of the exam, I can say I haven't said it yet, but it will cover all the sections of the course. Um, on, in terms of this latent variable method, you can probably, yeah, no, let's keep that in. Uh, so the part that I've, I've discussed in class will uh, will be in there. So they so expect questions from all six sections. Um, and then finally, if you do notice any as you're preparing for the exam, that's actually when most of you actually read the textbook for the first time, and more intensively certainly. Um, so I've noticed that I tend to get a lot more emails about grammar and spelling mistakes in the textbook around exam time. So if you find any as you're preparing for the exam, please email me so I can update those. Um, any suggestions to notes would be great. You guys are the fourth round that I've taught this, so hopefully like, the notes have kind of stabilized, but as you can notice, I still keep changing them on you every time. So I'm never quite satisfied with how they are. The website is always available. So I've, the previous years, they, they're still available at connectedme.ca. Com. Um, they're actually pointing now to the new one, so hopefully, like, unless I move away from my master, uh, it will always be available at the MAC address or in some somewhere on the internet. So I, I always make these notes perfectly available. Videos always available. I have people writing to me from all over the world asking questions about it and the videos, and particularly from the United States, I have a lot of companies expressing interest in it. So. They, they use it internally, and that's that's why they're there. So they will always be available. Um, the textbook will eventually, by uh, time, the summit will become an online book, uh, but it's a PDF right now that will become a book. So please keep in touch. Um, if, especially, it's always great to hear people that uh, have good success with these methods. Um, I also am happy, usually, to answer questions if you're having problems implementing these tools. Um, there's, I encourage you to stay, stay connected by LinkedIn, that's the easiest for me, um, or just by email, but it's always good to know where people are working. So if, you have, if you're not connected to me on LinkedIn, many of you are already, I'd appreciate if you do that. That way I can keep an idea of where, where people are and what they're doing and how they're using these tools. And even if you're not using these tools, it's always good to know where um, my master graduates are working and which areas they're working. I find that useful because I get my sense of people as asking, well, where do students from Mac work? Especially at the first year, second year level, people are always interested in what types of jobs they work for. And I know what my colleagues from grad school are working, they're working in finance, they're working in medicine, they're working in energy. But uh, there's all sorts of neat areas where people end up working in and using ChemEng. So it's always great to stay in touch with people that are, are uh, in the industry. So thanks again, thanks for everything. I've enjoyed teaching this class. Um, it's certainly one of the better, uh, the fourth time around, I'd say it's like, I'd say this is the best time I've taught it. But I say that every time, so. <laughs> okay, so thanks very much. <laughs>